Hi guys, some of you asked me about my burning procedure for amplifiers. Uh, if I could share how uh, do I do the burning and maybe to give some more details on that. So it'll be a quick video on the burning process. Um, but the first thing, let's explain uh, what the burn-in is. The burn-in comes uh, from burning in speakers, uh, where basically you have to play the music uh, using the speaker, and the speaker working and flexing uh, will be loosening the suspension of the speaker. So basically the characteristic and the sound of the speaker will change in time, with the suspension getting more loose. Uh, but in amplifiers like in the Sacrifice E405 clone, uh, we don't have any uh, mechanical parts that would be moving and losing the suspension. But the name stack, the thing is that uh, analog circuits do change uh, the sound signature over time. Um, from my knowledge, there are at least two uh, things that uh, will affect that uh, happening. The first one is the capacitors. Uh, that's actually a well-known and documented fact that capacitors will change uh, a little bit uh, of the parameters and the way they work uh, over the time uh, because of the current flow. Uh, it's not as uh, visible or measurable with electrolytic capacitors and more with uh, foil MKP capacitors uh, because of the uh, of a little bit different uh, structure inside. But uh, it's dis disputable if uh, that's actually the thing that we are hearing. The second thing, the second uh, thing that uh, will affect, may affect the sound, uh, is uh, all the junction points and all the uh, soldering points. This is actually one of the things that uh, they make you learn when you're attending technical university and you're learning about electronic, that uh, in, every ta in every situation when you're connecting to metals and you have a current flow across them, the current flow will make atoms of one metal to migrate into the second layer and from the second layer to the first one and um, uh, you're learning about that because it changes the properties of the uh, junction place uh, of the place where these metals are connected and sometimes it changes them in a way that you'd like to avoid for example if you try to join copper with uh, aluminium uh, this movement of the atoms will create a barrier will create uh, a part, an area that will not conduct electricity. That's why you don't join aluminium cables with metal cables at all. <clears throat> so anyway, something like that happens and it changes the junction properties and uh, it'll like, it, usually it'll actually help with the current flow. So this is the second thing that's happening and that was uh, well documented. Uh, there is a uh, dispute if these uh, two things are actually the reason for the changes that we're hearing. Maybe there is something else. There's also uh, a theory that uh, all of it is just uh, bias, listener bias. The idea is that if you're listening to your device, then your brain and your ears are adjusting to the new sound and you like it more and more. So basically, I, I wouldn't say that's true. Uh, because of a couple of things that I've checked myself. Uh, the first thing is that during my burning, I'm not listening to my devices. Uh, when I connect them for the first time, I'm listening to them for like 10 or 15 minutes to the songs that I know by heart, and I'm, make, um, and I'm taking notes about the qualities of the sound that I hear. Then I leave them playing for 100, 150, 200, 250, 300 hours in a row, and sometimes I do a quick listening session sometime uh, in the middle for 10 or 15 minutes, again taking notes. And uh, also there's other thing that I'm doing during the burn-in. I'm comparing them to my reference system, to other components that I know by heart. So my other components are not changing. I know them and I don't have to adjust my brain to them. So 
all of the changes that I'm hearing here uh, will be in regard to my reference system. So that's the second thing. Uh, and uh, two more notices. The first uh, thing uh, worth noticing is that if you hate the equipment from the start, there's no way the burn-in will change that. The burn-in um, changes are very minuscule. Uh, you are able to hear them and they will affect the sound, but it's not night and day change. This is something that will refine the sound, if you will, but it will not change the bass nature of the sound, the bass signature of the sound. Uh, if the amplifier is warm, it will be warm. It won't change to analytical in some magic way. And the other way around, if, the, if your amplifier is analyt analytical and dry sounding and you hate the sound of it, because, for example, you like warm amplifiers, there's no way that the burning will make uh, dry analytical and analytical amplifiers sound warm. So, having said that, uh, why do I make uh, burning? The changes in the equipment uh, are... Um, I can hear them. I can hear them. They are usually for the good. So when I'm doing a review, I'm always trying to get the most from the equipment. So I'm giving it a chance to reach this state of equilibrium uh, after uh, about 200-250 uh, hours. Uh, you don't have to do the burn in this way. The equipment will get these qualities over time. But the thing is that let's suppose that you're listening uh, to your new amplifier for one hour each day. And this basically means that you'll have... 365 hours on the clock after one year. We don't want that. We want to make this process faster and we have to, we want to get to this result uh, in a speedy way. Uh, so what do I do? I am connecting the amplifier and I let it play continuously for uh, at least 10 days. 10 days times 24 hours gives us 240 hours. Uh, sometimes I leave it playing on for two weeks. Uh, it's uh, a bit over uh, 300 hours in such case. Sometimes it happens because I just simply don't have the time to do anything, uh, any kind of review uh, in the meantime because of my day job and other duties in the home. Uh, so, how do I do this? I'm connecting the amplifier to the digital to analog converter. In this case, that's semi breve point standing right there and uh, the source of music is my small PC fanless PC over there which is also basically my main source of music uh, the thing is that uh, the small PC uses less than 12 watts of power uh, semi breve uses uh, also I think something like 10, 10 watts of power and during the burning process I'm measuring the power using uh, Tuya Zigbee uh, power connector, so I'm able to check how much current actually draws the amplifier that I'm burning in. And I'm doing one more thing. You can see it right now. I'm checking the temperature inside for this AccuFace clone. And the hottest places are the tops of the power transistors. You can see 60 degrees centigrade there. To be able to do that, I'm opening the case. It also helps with uh, ventilation, so I'm able to check if nothing bad happens uh, in the device because, you know, not many uh, audio devices are designed to be playing for like two weeks in a row straight. Uh, I'm also adding some, maybe not spacers, but ow, uh, anti-vibration pads like these. But not because of the vibration, simply because of the fact that they are quite high and they improve air circulation under the amplifier. This one is quite heavy, it's 25 kilos. So, I leave it playing, but I do one thing with speakers. I'm connecting uh, the speakers in a way that one of them is connected the right way so positive to positive and negative to negative and the other one is connected the other way so positive to negative and negative to positive 
This means that one will be working in phase and the other one will be working out of phase, which basically means that the sounds that are centered, that are present in both speakers with the same amplitude and frequency, will cancel each other out because the membranes will be working like that. Not against each other, but together like that. This basically causes them to play way, way quieter than they would be playing uh, when connected uh, correctly. Uh, you can uh, amplify this effect uh, by converting your sound source to mono. For example, using um, some kind of filter in um, FUBAR, if you're using PC as a sound source. Uh, when you convert your sound source to mono, it will mean that all of the sounds will be cancelling each other and the speakers connected this way will play really, really quietly. But the currents flowing through the uh, amplifier will still be quite high. The other way of doing burning is not using speakers, but using dummy loads like this resistor. It's uh, 50 watts, 8 ohms resistor. I hope you can see that in the camera. Yeah. Why that kind of resistor? It has to be able to take a lot of heat because all of the energy will be um, converted to heat. Uh, it has to be uh, close to the speaker impedance. So we have 8 ohms here. Uh, what are the uh, positives and negatives of using that? Uh, the positive side is that it's dead quiet. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and the negative side is that uh, this is purely a resistive load and it doesn't have uh, in theory, in practice, it will have a minuscule uh, component of uh, inductance and capacitance uh, but for all our purposes here it's pure resistance and moreover this resistance doesn't change with uh, frequency uh, real life speakers, regular speakers like these uh, they, uh, they impedance their impedance will depend on the frequency of the incoming signal, which basically means that the load will be changing. It will change for, from, for example, easy 8 ohm load to difficult load, like in case of my electrostats, uh, they will have something like 1.2 ohms uh, in the treble region. So, the resistor won't change the load, it will be always the same. Uh, it will not behave like a real speaker. So since I'm going to do the burnings for such a long time anyway, I still prefer to use speakers. Uh, that's also because I'm able to just get downstairs and don't hear anything for the, for the, throughout the most of the day. So I think that's all. If you'd like me to record a similar video uh, on burning in cables, or digital to analog converters or headphones or something like that just give me a shout in the comments if you have uh, any questions just ask them in the comments uh, if you think the burn-in is not real please just try it on your own using the technique that I described earlier just have open mind have open ears and try it for yourself I'm an electrical and uh, computer systems engineer with, I think it's 25 years of experience right now. And uh, although I'm not able to explain properly everything here, I know what my ears are telling me in a repeatable, describable, describable, ah, hard word, describable way. So try it on your own, check the results take notes and compare the notes from the beginning of the burning with the ones with the ones that you'll take at the end of the burning and enjoy your equipment enjoy your music see you next time and have a great day bye there's one more thing i forgot to mention and i'm sure you'll ask about that in the comments uh, what kind of uh, music i'm using during the burning there are two schools. The first one says that you should use white noise and the second school says you should use anything really. Uh, I've tried using white noise. Uh, the, 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 the web says that uh, white noise in theory should uh, be faster 
the burning should uh, take uh, mm, uh, should take less time uh, because the white noise has all the frequencies inside so the amplifier would be exposed to the whole spectrum at the same time uh, but I still prefer to use music why because first I haven't seen that difference it never was faster for me when I tried it with uh, white noise uh, secondly I per if I have to listen something in the background, if sometimes I, I'm getting upstairs and, and I'm hearing something, I prefer it, uh, prefer it to be music, because white noise sounds silly. Uh, and uh, the third reason, the very down to earth one, is that I have playlists of songs that I'm using for testing, and these songs uh, are chosen because they are allowing me to test uh, bass, mids, and treble, uh, so they are covering all the spectrum, sound spectrum anyway. And that's it. That's just it. Have a nice day. Bye.